As a person, I kind of uh, believe in automating everything around me. What technology, in a sense, does is it takes the universe as it exists and it figures out how to find sort of ways to hack or use that, the universe as it exists for human purposes. The, the thing to understand about the role of technology in automation is, you know, where do the humans fit in? You, know, you have this, this very sophisticated computational system. What is its goal? There's no definition of that. What's the goal of the weather? What's the goal of the universe? The big excitement of science over the past 300 years has been, we can do predictions. You know, in other words, if you say, where's the Earth going to be a million years from now? We can figure that out. The problem is, that's not a universal thing. In fact, the exact sciences have picked particular areas to concentrate on where reducibility, where the ability to kind of jump ahead by using fancier math and so on, is, is available. But in fact, an awful lot of what happens in nature and in the computational universe is irreducible in the sense that to know what will happen, you kind of have to go through each step and just see what happens. Now, in a sense, from the point of view of us feeling good about our existence, that's not a bad thing. Because if it was the case that, you know, all of human history, you could just go ahead and say, okay, here are the rules for human history. Now let's jump ahead and see what happens to these humans a million years from now. It'd be kind of disappointing to think that you don't actually have to live those million years. You can just, you know, apply this formula and see what happens. It justifies the, the kind of the significance of history, so to speak, that you actually have to live through it. You know, go back a thousand years and talk to somebody about what people do in the year 2017. I walk for an hour in the morning on a treadmill. Okay, person from a thousand years ago is gonna say, why on earth do you do that? That seems like the most pointless, you know, there's no, nothing is achieved by that. There's no purpose to that. Well, there's a whole story about, you know, fitness and long life and all this kind of thing, which might not be well understood by a person a thousand years ago. So you see that there's a certain evolution to the kinds of goals and purposes that, that we have as a civilization. Goals are an intrinsically human thing. They're, they're defined by us and by our history. And that's something that, in a sense, is unautomatable by definition. And that will no doubt continue. I mean, from the point of view of today, some of the scenarios of what will happen in the future, uploaded human consciousnesses are, are playing video games for the rest of eternity. You know, that's a bad outcome. That seems like you know, a disappointment for the future of the civilization, so to speak. But I think the thing that I've sort of increasingly realized is that if you look at sort of the course of history, at any given time, people have, you know, very passionate goals that they're trying to achieve in the civilization. And as, as sort of the environment changes, the structure of those goals changes, the goals interact with the environment. And so the goals that the uploaded human consciousnesses who seem to us like they're playing video games for the rest of eternity may have, may be as meaningful there as any of the goals that we have today are. It's just they're not things that we can understand from our point in, in history. Now, once you have the goals, actually achieving those goals, pretty much everything in the achievement of those goals is automatable and probably will progressively be automated. That's been the, the course of technological history. So it's, in other words, mapping human goals onto what can be achieved with, with the universe, whether it's the material universe or the computational universe.